Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel, it squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flags till his arms ached, but Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. The fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. We'll pull you out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. They hooked the rope on and all pulled, except the fat director. My doctor has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled and pulled. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, one, two, three, push, but did not help. My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last another train came. The guard waved his red flag and stopped it. The two engine drivers, the two firemen, and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, it stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it'll begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? So they brought the other engine up, and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever it could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. So they gave it up. They told Henry, we shall leave you there for always and always and always. They took up the old rails, built a wall in front of him, and cut a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out, and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He's very sad, because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. But I think he deserved it, don't you? Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello, and Gordon would say, poop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoilt his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches full of important people like the fat director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he panted. Trickety trot, trickety trot, trickety trot, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute he thought, I'll poop, poop, poop at Henry and rush through and out into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there when crack, whoosh. He was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. His driver stopped the train. What's happened to me? asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train any more. Oh dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. Mmph, said the fat director. I never liked these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him on a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull the train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fat director, I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry, he asked. Yes, said Henry at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty, his boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Ooh, I'm so sick. 
stiff. Oh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the fat director kindly. Henry came back feeling better, and they put him in front. Peep, peep, said Edward, I'm ready. Peep, 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 said Henry, so am I. Pull hard, pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it. They puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, and faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, we've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat headed for his tea. <laughs> they never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said thank you, and the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry, and I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly, and on their way they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he had his new coat? He's very proud of it, and all the engines are. He doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over.